That's right. Forward kinematics, right? People remember forward kinematics to some degree? Good. Um, we're going to look at uh, inverse kinematics this week. Um, I'm looking at this right here. Now, this is just an inchworm moving, right? Uh, one of the limits with forward kinematics that came up very rapidly was that um, you can't get soft stuff to bend well. Um, well, and actually that's enveloping, which we're going to approach as well. So this technology we learned last week is very good at stuff like, um, like knights and armor and spaceships and yada, 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 things like that. It's very bad at um, things like this because this is all one piece and it has to bend and stretch. And so it was very bad at doing living stuff. It really couldn't be done. The other problem, which you might have experienced, is that forward kinematics is sort of the opposite of the way we really do things. That if I reach for this mouse to move it around, um, I don't think about moving this muscle and then moving this muscle and then moving this muscle and then moving this one. What I think about is moving this, and my body figures all this out. So they wanted to come up with a system whereby they could do something similar. They could actually have it where you move the end thing and all the things connected to it follow. Now that is called inverse kinematics. And it actually serves many important roles in robotics and several other areas. Um, I'm going to show you how we use inverse kinematics in soft homage and then use a small example here which you can then apply to your projects over here as you work on them, okay? So I want to imitate that inchworm moving. I'm going to go to the animate menu over here and I'm going to draw a chain of bones. Um, inverse kinematics in soft homage, the only thing that, that uses inverse kinematics are skeletal bone systems. Um, over here there is a create and I click create skeleton draw 2D chain. I'm going to click it and my mouse pointer will change. Okay, if you look here my mouse pointer now says the left appends a bone, middle ends the chain, right ends the tool, and I'm going to open my schematic which we talked about last week. This is my basic schematic without much in it. Now, that will be the root of it, so I want to start over here. I'm going to click and a few things happened. I get this thing which is called a null. A null is just what it sounds like, it is nothing. It is just a location. And now I'm going to click again and several other things will happen. I'll click here. Okay, if I go up here, you now see there's a structure. There is a bone and there's this thing called an effector. I am now gonna draw this chain of bones in roughly the shape that I want the inchworm to move around in. Hey, well, so I'm going to go like this, and I want him to be able to go up like that and come down around like that, okay? And then I am going to right mouse click. This will end it. When I do that, I hit the A key, and you see we have a lot going on here. I'm going to reorganize this. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, but, but, but I want to rearrange all. And you'll see what I have here is a pretty big structure that's already parented together. If I zoom in on it, it is a root, it is a bunch of bones, and it has this one lone thing off the end of it, the effector. Hold down my M key to move it. This is the only thing that uses inverse kinematics. Now, I want you to watch this. If I select this and translate it, watch what happens. See that? So now, rather than doing all that work with all the rotations, which would take forever, I can just move this one thing and I can get the action I want to have happen. But here is the problem. Um, those are green, which means they're implicit, which means we don't see them. They do not render. Inverse kinematics only works by modifying other geometry. The good thing about this is that it can modify any geometry. So when I want to make something using inverse kinematics, what I do is I draw this chain of bones in the default shape I want it to go to, and then I'm going to stretch this out straight to make my life a little simpler. Ah. Escape, select my effector, and let's move it like that. 
and I'm going to put some geometry on it. Uh, get primitive, I'll take, um, you know, I'll take a cylinder for most of it, probably for all of it, but we'll see. Uh, let's make it, we'll make it thinner. We want to give it a lot more section so it bends well, something like that. Base doesn't really matter to me that much. And I probably want to make it longer. Maybe like that. Let's rotate the thing. Yeah, sir. Yes. I'm going to go get some lunch. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to scale myself a little bit here. Oh, oh, oh like that. Oop. Just one axis like that. And um, I might, I'll put some legs on it, though I probably won't do much with the legs at this point. Um, let's go to polygon mode. And I'll select um, all the polygons along a line of the thing. Uh, we'll say like that. You know what, I should probably select every other one, why not? Two, uh, I'm gonna do a hidden line removal just to make it easier to see what I'm doing. Uh, we will do, uh, 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 uh. that and that, let's get the other side. Did we start in the front of it? Let's see. Yes. So that I don't get on this side, I got this one, this one, this one, uh, this one, this one. One, that one, and that one. Um, I will do an extrusion on them. Extrude along an axis, good. It's looking a tad inchwormy already. Um, I will inset them slightly like that. We'll give them a couple more subdivisions, maybe like that. Uh, I wonder if I can rotate them downward. Rotate them forward. That's cool, but not what I want. That's more like what I want, but on not the right sides. But I'll leave them roughly like that and say I'm happy with it, okay? Now, I want to attach that object to this chain. I'm going to open up my schematic again. Um, if you want to animate well, you have to get used to using your schematic. I'm going to take the inchworm, which is just this thing over here, and move it over there. Now I'm going to envelope it. Enveloping is the process of taking those bones and saying, control this geometry. Uh, my geometry is selected. I hit envelope, set envelope, yes. My mouse pointer changes. It says pick node, pick branch, abort picking. I'm going to right mouse here. Just gonna get all those bones. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm middle mouse there. And now I'm gonna right mouse to end the operation like that. Now, if I do this, is it, yes. What you'll see is you'll see that all of these things that have changed color, they now have this link to the object. That means the object will be deformed by this. So if I select my end effector now, this is what happens. Like that. Which isn't too awful. If I subdivide. Um, now let's animate it quickly. I will, I'll close my schematic for the time being. Um, let me go grab that end effector again. Let me translate the whole thing straight like this. And like in this view too. Uh, you'll note I very often um, animate in these three views and look at the result there. That's very important because in these three views I know that my, I'm on the right axis and I can see the result over here. So let's first animate the motion. Um, I want the inchworm to start where he is, like that. I'll go forward, like let's say about 10 or 12 frames, and I'll have him lift his butt up and put it there, let's say. And then by maybe frame 15 or so, I'll have them go back to this position, like that. So I have this going on now, right? Now I want to cycle that. Let's bring up our animation editor, the zero key. Very easy to see which axis this is, that one right there. And I want to cycle that axis. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's go here and I will cycle. And now it should be doing this which might be too rapid, but I'll deal with that later. Now, I'm going to move it. I'm going to select the front of the chain with the middle mouse, which means it will move everything at the same time. And I'm gonna time it to the move. So, 
basically I'll keyframe them to start right here. And now I'm going to go forward until he's here and I'm going to keyframe it again. And all that's going to do is lock it in place to right there. And I want to check something now. If I look at this pointer here, I'm one, two, three grid units out now. And I started out one, two, three, four, five, six grid units. So what I want to do is, I should be able to jump to it. By the time I get here, I want to move forward three grid units. Uh, one, two, three, probably about there. Let me see if I'm right. If I'm right, it will time well. One, two, yeah, that's about right. Now I want to cycle that. Let's take that end root and I'm going to hit my zero key. And here is the cycle for that, I can tell. The problem with this is I want it to keep going. Um, that cycle, I want to go back and forth, back and forth. This cycle, I want to add to. Curves, uh, cycle with offset. Now watch when I zoom out what that does. What that means is this will keep going in that direction. So that if I'm here, and let's say I wanted to have this thing coming towards me like that, we'll say, let's lose the grid. And I hit play. That's how that does that. That's inverse kinematics with enveloping and actually a little bit of forward kinematics on the moving, but not that much. What are your thoughts on that? And that's a very simple example of it. If I wanted to do something like a leg of an animal that bent, or a finger even, the way I would do it is I would make a simple three bone chain, and then I would make an object and put it on there, and then it would bend nicely like that. If I want to do a pair of legs, I would draw a leg, and I can even show it quickly, but uh, there's another, there's another video where I show that. <laughs> um, I would draw the shape of the leg with bones, stretch it out, put geometry on it, and then move it around like that. This technology gets you to about 1995 in terms of character animation. Um, it was used heavily actually in the first Jurassic Park, which is the first 3D movie in which living objects existed. They were the dinosaurs. You couldn't get dinosaurs to bend nicely with just, wait, what? 1992 regime makes the point, yes. Um, you could not get dinosaurs to bend nicely as if they were made out of plates of armor. So they needed technology that would make them bend nicely. Enveloping became a part of that. Um, I've said before that character animation is fix upon fix upon fix upon fix upon fix, which is true. Um, motion capture, which you hear about a lot today, basically this is underlying all of that. So to understand any of that later stuff, you have to understand curve editors, you have to understand schematics. Uh, again, because the more advanced stuff, and I'll put it in here quick. This is one of the rigs we use in 3D2. And it has a lot of things involving forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, uh, scripting. Um, for example, if I grab this, it moves around nicely. And this is the schematic. And you'll see it has chains hooked up, things going back and forth. Get a good understanding of forward and inverse kinematics in your schematic, and you'll be able to understand that very well. Okay? Okay, folks. Um, give that a shot. Um, 